prospect of gaining everything. And so the idea here is to humbly open yourself up to God. Of course, do it in the, on the basis of evidence, not against the evidence. But the idea is that if you do, ultimately, you might come to see that, that, not, that not that God is a human creation, but we humans are a divine creation, are the product not only of divine intelligence, but to some degree also of divine love. Thank you very much. Humility is a Christian virtue. And one of the things that you might want to be humble about is your own understanding of the doctrines that you're criticizing. Um, you have uh, had great fun with what I would consider cartoon versions of just about all the... Uh, what? Is this on? Hello. Now is it on? And it wasn't. Okay. Um, sometimes the way people understand things is by rewriting them in their own terms and then saying, oh, well, what a crazy idea that is. And of course, if they haven't done justice to them in their own terms, then it's pretty crazy. So what we've seen here, I think, is uh, a number of occasions in which... Um, try another microphone. Boy, the micro... Yeah, that's, that's better. Um, We've seen a number of uh, caricatures lambasted, a lot of fun had with them. Uh, I, I don't know which ones to start with. Uh, well, let's, let's talk about the Big Bang. Uh, for Dinesh, this is proof of God's existence. Uh, remarkable how a creator comes into this picture. I don't see that 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 um, that space and time in our universe started what 14 billion years ago. Yeah, that's that's right. But not that God created space and time. That the universe by having the Big Bang created space and time. Now, if uh, you say, well, the universe can't create itself. Well. God can't create himself either. What, where's, I don't know where you get the other principle that there has to be a creator, unless you're just um, falling back on the trickle-down theory of goodness again. Right? You just don't see how something this wonderful could exist unless there was something more wonderful still that created it. That's the pre-Darwinian hunch, and I think there's, uh, it's just a hunch, and you have nothing going there. Um, how did the universe get here? No. That's the, that was the question he had. It's the other way around. How did we get here in this part of the universe? Well, we couldn't be in a part of the universe that had other laws. And as far as we know, there may be lots of other universes in which wandering creatures like us couldn't exist. And so the fact that we exist in a wonderfully fine-tuned universe is, is nothing that requires the explanation of a, of, a, of a brilliant creator, we couldn't exist in any other universe. Here we are. Uh, this is simply a, a cartoon version of the anthropic principle. And uh, there's a lot of literature out there. I'm not going to try to give a physics lecture here. Neither you nor I are physicists uh, or cosmologists. Um, if Alex Vilenka were here, I'm sure he would uh, be willing to fill in that detail. Um, more important to me, I think, is... Uh, Let's see, all of these different points. Well, let's, let's go back to your opening numbers of, of, of atheist murders. Uh, uh, yes, the number of, of people killed uh, by atheists in the 20th century is, is, is terrible. Um, but first of all, notice that the regimes that you're talking about were themselves sort of proto-religions. 
In fact, it occurred to me, let's think about Stalin for a moment. Was he an atheist? You might say, well, of course he was an atheist. No, on the contrary, I think in a certain sense, he wasn't an atheist at all. He believed in God. Not only that, he believed in a God whose will determined what right and wrong was. And he was sure of the existence of this God, and the God's name was Stalin. And he created a cult of, of worship and uh, of uh, refusal to tolerate any uh, disagreement. And this is the way, this is in fact the way religions used to start in the old days. Uh, uh, if we look at uh, Kim Il-sung in North Korea, I think we see a good case of that too. Um, oh my, there's so many points to talk about. Um, you say as if it were just obvious that free will, choice, consciousness, intentionality, that there's no explanation of those uh, in, in terms of the Darwinian picture. Well, of course, you might be right, but my whole career has been designed to elaborate those explanations, and I seem to have made a fair amount of progress. I can't, of course, hope to show you those complexities in a minute or in five minutes or in an hour, but uh, for you just to assert that, of course, these things can't be explained in this way, uh, strikes me as uh, simply uh, an assertion that you pull out of thin air. Well, in your book, Breaking the Spell, uh, Dan uh, makes, I think, a very useful, um, you may say, rule of fairness. He's talking about atheism, he's talking about religion, and he basically says this. He says, every time somebody accuses a religious dictator of doing something bad, all the Christians basically say, oh, but it wasn't me, it wasn't Christ, he didn't teach that, and so on. To which Dan has the following answer, which I think is worth taking seriously. He says, wait a minute. He goes, religion has got to take responsibility for the crimes committed in its name. I cite this in my book. He says, if, if someone kills in the name of Allah, Islam's going to have to take a bit of responsibility for that. If Hamas or Hezbollah does it, you can't just say, well, they weren't being true Muslims. They think they were. And I agree with Dan's principle. But then I notice that when it comes to atheism, he tries to dodge it. Because if it is true that the ordinary, mild-mannered Christian has got to take some responsibility, even for the Salem witch trials, even for the Inquisition, even for the Crusades, and I maintain that the ordinary, mild-mannered atheist at the Tufts Free Thought Society has to take some responsibility for Pol Pot and for Stalin. These guys were committing their crimes in the name of it. You can't just say, well, they sort of resembled religion. Now you're basically saying religion must take the blame not only for what's done in its name, but also for what's done in the name of atheism. This is a totally bogus form of reasoning. So, let me turn, so if the Christians have to take responsibility for Torquemada, poor Dan's going to have to take some responsibility for Stalin. That's just the way it is, based on his principle. Now, let's talk about the Big Bang, very briefly. I don't want to get into a debate about physics, I just want to say something very simple. All of nature came into existence at a certain singularity. Before that, one may say there was no nature, so there can't be a natural explanation for the Big Bang, because the Big Bang encompasses all of nature. So here's my argument. It's very simple. Everything that has a beginning has a cause. The universe has a beginning. The universe has a cause. That cause we call God. That's my argument. Now, fine-tuning. Here is where we get into what I want to call faith-based atheism. Because we have the fact of a universe. And by the way, Dan, I think, very cunningly tried to shift the argument, which is not an argument I made. I did not say that out of the millions of, of stars in our universe, it's very surprising that we have life on Earth. That can be easily explained. I never made that argument. My argument is that the entire universe with all its galaxies and all its stars has to be exactly as old as it is. The mass of the proton has got to 